tired of your crap. You're gonna work today. We're gonna make this happen. You're not gonna throw any fits, and you're gonna run, just like we want you to. I've had enough of the games from this car, enough. We're not playing any more of these games. We're going to make the BRZ 100% fully functional today. I've had enough. We have our O2 bung welded into our new, or, or, well, our old overpipe, our current overpipe. We have our O2 bung in the overpipe. My lip really hurts still, for those of you that saw the last video, don't kiss hot welds. It, uh, not the smartest thing to do at all. But the new radiator gets dropped off today, so that means we can get everything in the BRZ good to go, ready to go, ready to start and prepare it for the tune this coming Saturday. So UPS is gonna drop off the new radiator. While I wait for them to drop off the radiator, we're gonna get the exhaust put back together so that way when the radiator comes, we can just focus on getting like the turbo kit back in because I pretty much, hold up. I pretty much have everything disassembled out of it. There's no intercooler piping, no intake, no intercooler, no oil cooler, none of that. I had to take it all out to be able to get the old radiator out and the fans out. So, <sighs> Let's just jump into this. Let's start doing it. Let's get the exhaust put back together. Uh, we're gonna made up the, the only thing I really have to put back in is the overpipe, get the O2 sensor put in for the AFR gauge, get the AFR gauge wiring kind of tucked up out of the way, and then we can start going on this. After I get the uh, overpipe put in there, I'll kind of show you guys how I ran the wiring for the gauges, but let me get this taken care of first. Air fuel ratio gauge sensor is hooked up. Exhaust is all plumbed back in. So on the overpipe, you guys saw where we welded the sensor yesterday. It couldn't have been in a more perfect spot. It is like right on top of the overpipe as it goes over the subframe. Next up, we are going to rob the oil pressure gauge out of the STI and run it in this. So the way we're gonna do that is the stock one. We're just gonna pull it out that green wire. We're just gonna ground to the chassis so that way it tricks the system into thinking it always has oil pressure. We'll remove the stock oil pressure sensor. We'll put in our new AEM one. Well, new to the BRZ AEM one. Throw that guy in there, get it all wired up. So as you guys know, I already have boost and AFR in the car. Oil pressure is gonna go in the little side vent to the left of the steering wheel. And then that should complete our gauge setup. Once we have that done, we're literally just waiting on UPS to drop off our radiator so we can reassemble everything else. So let me grab this gauge out of the STI. We'll get it wired up. We'll get everything set up in here. And then hopefully uh, by that time, UPS will drop off the radiator so that way we can finish this thing and get her started. So we now have our oil pressure gauge wired in set up. I'll run you guys through this if you guys are not aware. So here's our new AEM oil pressure sensor. Uh, this is the one that we took out of the STI. The wiring just goes up and it goes through a grommet back there that goes into like the backside of the dash. It's pretty accessible. The old wiring, I found a ground strap right there on the side of the frame rail. All I did was just put a small O-ring connector so that way I could ground it out, grounded it to that. So the way that that switch works is it works on an open and closed basis. So when it's open, it doesn't see oil pressure and the oil pressure light comes on. When it's closed, then it sees oil pressure and it turns the light off. So all we did was close the system so that way it thinks that the car always has oil pressure so that way the light stays off. Pretty simple to do. Uh, this does not work for every car. This only works with single wire configurations, but it will get the job done. So now that we have uh, the sensor, like I said, it comes up into the car, comes up into the car, and then here's our oil pressure gauge. I actually really like the location of this one. This is like an ATI um, gauge pod for the vent, and it still lets air flow through too, which is pretty nice, as you guys can see on there. So we have our oil pressure on the bottom, we have boost on the bottom of the pillar, and then air fuel ratio up there. And when you turn them all on, they all get power. So that's nice. So pretty neat that all of those come on now. Now uh, the way I wired these is I just grounded them to the chassis and then uh, they all pull power from an Atta fuse that goes into the fuse panel for the ignition. So that way they only turn on when the gauges turn on. So pretty neat stuff. So now we're just stuck playing the waiting game again because I'm still waiting for UPS to drop off this radiator. Once they drop off the radiator, uh, we'll pick this video back up. We'll keep going. So for now, I'll see you guys whenever they drop it off. For you guys, it'll be like two seconds. So I'll see you, we'll see you somewhat shortly. Our radiator showed up. 
our CSF radiator did. So you guys have already seen me assemble this turbo kit. So I'm going to just time lapse me getting the BRZ back together because I want to get it running tonight. So I'm just going to get this radiator thrown in. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the turbo kit put back on the car because as you guys saw, I did take the majority of it off. Uh, but I do want to show you guys this radiator first. I'll show you this. We'll jump into it. We'll get all this thrown on. We'll get the car burped. We'll get it bled. We'll make sure all our gauges are working. And hopefully we can take this thing out for a drive tomorrow because I want to drive it. I want to see how it feels. Even though we're still on the stock tune-ish, I can't get on it at all. But I want to make sure that like we do a shakedown to make sure everything with the car is solid. So I'm assuming it's just a radiator. Uh, as you guys know before, I had a Koyo. One, two, three, four. There is our new radiator. So I got the CSF because it was in stock, ready to ship, good to go. So I'm just gonna time lapse me, get the car put back together, we'll get it put back together, we'll get it started, hopefully get it burped and uh, be on our way with this so that way we can uh, go drive the car tomorrow and make sure that everything's solid with it. So as I'm sure you guys can see, I'm wearing a different shirt. It is now daytime, it is the next day. So last night we pretty much got everything put back on for the turbo kit. This morning I had one or two small things to do like hook up the exhaust. What else did we do? Oh, and put the oil cooler back on the car. We did end up moving the oil cooler location uh, just because we were able to finagle the lines enough to be able to make it do so. But let me give you guys a rundown of what we did. I'll show you guys the car. We'll start it up. Hopefully it doesn't pee cooling everywhere. It's the last thing we want. So as you guys can see, we, we pushed the oil cooler more, more over to the right. So we have more like intercooler area. I feel like we have the same amount of intercooler showing. It's just more over to the right. Uh, got the core support back on. So this is the modified core support I was waiting on forever. So the intake actually bolts up to the core support. All couplers, turbo, everything is good to go. Downpipes on, full exhaust is hooked up. Oil cooler lines are back on. Vacuum lines have been ran for the blow off valve. So it just goes under the intake manifold, tees off to go to the boost gauge in the car. So I think at this point, pretty much ready to start it. Should we see what happens? Let's see what happens, Matt. Why does what look funny? Don't say that. So I think I'm going to uh, prime the system. Actually, no, I should be good to start. I've already, already has oil pressure everywhere. Already started it before. Yeah, I've already started it before. I didn't mess with the oil system aside from the oil cooler. But I should just push it, push any air that's in there out. So let's start it up, man. Let's burp it. We got to burp this bad bitch. Normal oil pressure from what I saw in the SDI was around like 25 at idle. So I'm guessing once it like gets to a warmer. Is this actually on there? It's only one of the ties is on there. I can't get the other one on. The one on this side of the turbo, there's no way I'm getting that fit on. Can I give her a baby rev? So we're getting the car burped right now. There's a couple issues that I already know are prevalent that we have to fix. Um, so far, everything is running relatively normal. If you come in here to the cockpit, we have oil pressure. Uh, my oil pressure trick did not work, so I'm gonna go buy a T-fitting today from Lowe's. Uh, boost, I mean, we're getting good, good and normal vacuum. AFR sensor is broken. No surprise, every AEM sensor that I've gotten has always like died on me for some reason. Not quite sure why, but we're gonna get the car up to operating temp. Uh, get all the air bubbles out of the cooling system so that way it's just one less thing we have to do later. After that, I'll swap the uh, AFR sensor from the STI over into the BRZ just to get this guy going and good. But hey, so far everything is working except for the head unit. For some reason, the head unit like stopped working. I'm guessing it's a, and the clock. I don't know why. I'll have to check the fuses for those. I think I might have tapped into the fuses with these for those and that might have like blown a fuse. I don't know. 
Okay, so a couple small issues that we're gonna have to address. We're still burping the car right now, obviously. Uh, the lower grill has to be cut out. Like, we don't have an option. It sticks out too far on the backside where it's gonna hit the oil cooler. So we're gonna be cutting out the lower grill. I need to get a Y-fitting adapter for the oil pressure uh, gauge sensor location just so I can have the AEM one in there and the OEM one just because that little trick we did did not work. Uh, for some reason, my head unit and clock inside of the car aren't working. I'm guessing that's because I tapped into power on those and I bumped a fuse size up so I can easily fix that. And then lastly, the AEM air fuel ratio sensor is it's just busted. I have one in the STI that I like chopped together when I had this issue last time, so we'll just transfer that one over. I can make another one later on when it comes time to do the STI, but I'm stoked, you guys. It's running, we're burping it, we're getting all the air out. It smells like poop in there. There's no catalytic converters in that car, so it smells like butthole. Once we get done burping it, I'm gonna shut it off, let it cool down, fix these smaller issues just to get this thing 100% for the dyno on this Saturday. Because if you're getting tuned, you can make some power. So the goal for today is to get it 100%. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm going to go to Lowe's, see if they have a 1 8 MPT splitter adapter so that way we can run the stock oil pressure gauge and the AEM oil pressure gauge. What's that? Yeager, get back here. I'm done with your shit, small dog. Once the car cools down, we'll swap over the AEM sensor that's in the car for the AFR gauge for the one that I like commingled together to make work and it works fantastic. After we do that, uh, we'll cut the front bumper and we should be good to go at that point. I'll do the radio stuff uh, another time. Yeager, get back here. Don't fucking do it, small dog, I swear to God. Update, we returned from Home Depot. They didn't have any MPT fittings, but I did buy a rotary tool with some uh, blades because I didn't have a Dremel or rotary tool. I always used mats. So grabbed my own Milwaukee, it was like, 80 bucks, something like that, but it will do us wonders. So we're gonna throw a cutting wheel on there, throw a battery on there, we're gonna come to the backside of this bumper here. And then I know there's not a lot of light, but like, ooh, let me put this in the sun. So on the backside of the bumper here, you can see this lip going all the way around it. We're just gonna follow that line, cut all of the inner grill out of this. So that way we can just bloop, throw this up on the car and hopefully at that point it clears the oil cooler and uh, we can get the bumper put back on, mounted on. Once the bumper's on, I'm gonna put the car back on the ground and then we can take care of the other smaller, actually before we put it back on the ground, I am gonna swap that O2 sensor, but let's get the bumper cut up first uh, and then we'll worry about swapping that O2 sensor down there for the one that actually works. So that way we can actually read our AFRs. So the bumper is very open without the grill, but obviously the oil cooler wouldn't fit with the grill on here. I'm not a huge fan of having all this open, so I think I'm gonna get like some black mesh or chicken wire to put down here, uh, just to protect the front mount in the oil cooler, because if that oil cooler takes a big enough rock, uh, it'll definitely penetrate it and we will lose oil pressure, and that is just not something that we want happening. But for now, the bumper does fit back on the car. Like I said, personally, not a huge fan of how like open and visible everything is and how exposed it all is. We're also very tight on room. Uh, Matt did come up with an idea for remounting the oil cooler, but we're gonna need a welder to make us some brackets or a fabricator at least. So that probably is not going to happen until obviously after the tune, but for now the bumper's at least on the car, so we should be good for the short term. And then I'll have Kyle or someone else make us some brackets, Devin or Kyle or someone, they'll help us out and make some brackets for this thing. But uh, bumper fits back on. We need to also cut the metal like under tray here, let me grab it actually. We need to modify that because the external wastegate uh, as it sits right now would just shoot at this thing and uh, we're gonna need it to shoot at the ground. So uh, I'm gonna get this guy mocked up on the car. We'll like make a circle of where we wanna cut. We'll grab the angle grinder. We'll make some cuts in this guy. We can get that put back up on the car. Uh, before we do that though, we'll swap out the O2 sensors. Once that's done, we can put the car back on the ground and uh, see if it'll move under its own power. I'm pretty sure it will. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Totally realize this is a longer video. Don't really care. Uh, got a lot going on, so we gotta get it done. But uh, got the metal tray down there cut, got it deburred, got it good to go to go back on the car. I've got the front of the bumper 
uh, mount actually mounted back on the car. I need to swap this O2 sensor though before we put that splash guard on and before we put the car back on the ground because that's the last thing we have to do while the car is in the air. But I wanna show you guys this issue that I have with AEM gauges or AEM air fuel ratio gauges because this happens on every single like sensor and gauge that I buy from them. Now, don't get me wrong, AEM makes really good stuff, but here's the problem that I have with every single AEM air fuel ratio gauge that I buy. So if we come in here, we put the key in the ignition. We obviously, oh, okay, I can turn that all the way off. We obviously get power to the gauges. Up top is our air fuel ratio gauge. Now, as you can see right now, it says 14.6. As soon as I start the car, it's gonna start out at like 14.5, 14.7, and then it's just gonna lean out. And even when I hit the gas, it just won't change. Look, you can see it's leaning out right now without even the car on, and it's gonna go to three dashes. Sensor's bad, even when I start the car. Nothing, every single, AEM sensor that I get does this. Now, I'm gonna show you this one that I made, and I promise you, I can actually put money in on, on it. I'll guarantee you this one that I made works. So this is a Denso sensor that I bought on Amazon. I'll link it down below. This is the OEM, I guess not OEM, but this is the AEM wiring harness. All I did was splice the wires together on those to make this sensor work. This is the one out of the STI. I've had no problems with it since I've had it on the car. So I'm gonna put this one in the car and I'll show you, like it's magically just gonna work again, I promise. All right, old sensor is out. This is the one that came with the AEM gauge. It's been used like maybe for 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes max. Now, I guarantee you when I come in here and I start this thing, it's gonna work. So you remember last time that thing just dashed, here, let me close the door so it stops freaking out. So you remember last time the AEM gauge just like freaked out and went to like dash, dash, dash. Who, all right, we're sitting right at 14.6, 14.5. Watch, when I go to start it, it's going to work. Weird, it works. I'll let the car idle for a minute so that way I can actually show you guys, but the car runs incredibly rich right now. So I'm just gonna give it a little baby rev. Look at that. AFR actually changes now. Weird, the AEM gauges, or the AEM sensors never work for me. So if you have a similar issue, I'll link below the uh, sensor that I use and just splice onto the AEM sensors, but, or the AEM harness. Look at that, that's fixed. So now that we have the bumper cut and back on the car, the AFR sensor wiring gauge fixed. Uh, the last two things I have to do are to do the Y fitting for the MPT oil pressure sensor gauge for the OEM one. They didn't have any at Lowe's or Home Depot, so I ordered one on Amazon. I'll link that one below too. But essentially, that's just going to let us run that OEM oil pressure sensor, this one right here, and the AEM one. So that way we can monitor oil pressure and the car still reads oil pressure. Uh, but I can't do that until tomorrow. I'll do that off camera. It's as simple as just putting in a new fitting and then just screwing in the other two. Uh, last thing I have to do is get everything back on the car, put it back on the ground, and then I have a fuse that I need to swap. I'll also do that off camera. But let's see what it looks like on the ground and see if the car actually moves under its own power at this point because I want to see it back on the ground after like two weeks being on jack stands. Bulk majority of the issues are now fixed, or all the smaller stuff. I swapped out that gauge sensor, as you guys saw, and it works again. Uh, I got the like under tray splitter dealio back on. That little square that I cut in the splash guard is perfect for the external wastegate. So the external wastegate will shoot like at the ground now, so that way it's not all just generating underneath of the car and building up. I got the radio issue fixed, uh, my own fault. When I was wiring the oil pressure gauge in, I pulled the fuse for the radio for some reason. Don't know why, but it's back in there. Everything is good now. So, we're ready, we're ready. The only thing I have left to do uh, to prep the car for the tune is uh, check the oil after we start it and let it cool back down so that way all the oil can drain back into the pan and wait for that uh, 1 8 MPT splitter to come in, which comes in tomorrow from Amazon. So, looking forward to it, Amazon. But uh, let's hop in it and see if it moves under its own power. It should, no reason it shouldn't. No reason at all it shouldn't. I'm 
I'm gonna let it run for like five minutes, uh, turn it off, let it cool down, and then we'll check the oil to make sure everything's good to go. Should be. Also, surprisingly enough, after swapping that AFR sensor, AFR is pretty good, like, on the stock tune. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but at idle, it sits, like, right at 14.7 with everything that we just threw on without a tune. It's idling pretty good. All right. Let it sit for, like, five minutes. Let the oil drain back into the pan and check the oil. And then we should be good to go. Perfect. It's a little difficult to see, but oil is right on the dot for that. Uh, this car takes a lot of oil. It took nine quarts of oil. Nine quarts. Nine quarts of oil in this small two liter. It's ridiculous. All right, my friends, with that, the BRZ is pretty much good to go for the tune this Saturday. Uh, like I said, we are being tuned over at a local shop, uh, over at a local shop called Intech Racing. Um, Surge Line doesn't tune ECU tech cars, so Intech Racing is a very good local shop that's gonna be doing the tune for us. I'm super pumped on it. The last thing, the very last thing that I'm waiting on for this car is just a 1 8 NPT splitter, so that way we can put in that stock oil pressure gauge again, just so the light turns off on the dash, uh, just because I don't wanna be staring at it all the time. It's just gonna bother the hell out of me, even though we have that AEM gauge in there. But she runs, she drives, she moves under her own power. Super pumped about this. Um, I'm gonna make a video coming up in the next like week or so, uh, kind of covering like the in-depth like problems of what it comes to when it comes to like turboing, a naturally aspirated car, or just working on any car in general. It's not what people make it look like to be on YouTube and all these other places. Like you run into a lot of problems. And I showed you guys a lot of the problems I was running into. It's not just like, hey, you can strap a turbo to the car and just blah, and just be good. It just, it doesn't work that way at all. And I guarantee you maybe, maybe five, five percent of projects you're gonna do will maybe go off without like any issues whatsoever but super pumped for this so the next video we're gonna take the car out we're gonna go drive it around a little bit do like a shakedown style thing just to make sure everything is like 100 good for the dyno tune just because i don't want any issues to come up that's going to be pending how the stock tune reacts so far from what i've seen in here the stock tune is reacting okay enough to where we can drive it and just stay in vacuum the the entire time we will not get into boost at all when it comes to driving this thing out on the street until we're tuned but super pumped for it so sorry if this is a longer video i don't care it's a lot of stuff that we went over and a lot of stuff we did but if you guys like the video, you guys know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue like the STI's actual color. Just turn it blue like the Subaru. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one I'll put it in quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.